and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give you a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. £1,160. I would like cash. more than that. Please bear in mind I need to make a profit. I'm not yes. going to If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say, no way. Reject that. Have a gamble. Go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. I will be on hand at all times to help and advise you. Today, the show comes to you from Leicester. We're at the home of the Leicester Tigers rugby ground. Yay! Wow, what a scrum that is. People have arrived in large numbers. They want to do business. They want to get some cash or go to auction. You know why they're here. They're here for the real deal. The proceedings are well underway here in Leicester. Plenty for our dealers to delve into. Victor, pleased to meet you. Helen Gardner's tuning up first. So, do you know more about it than me? You tell me exactly what it is. It's called a flagellate. It's basically it's a simple wooden whistle, but it, it's more sophisticated than that. As it's I got can see keys, that. Yes. Yeah. It has um, some ivory mounts. It was made by a gentleman called Simpson, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it's early to mid 19th century. I'm not sure. It certainly looks like it's but 19th century I think anyway. He could, be, mm. he could place it um, with some research. Yeah, I like that. Fitness. I think this has been replaced. I think this yes, mouthpiece, the mouthpiece has been replaced. Has I can been see replaced. that. They, are, uh, they, they usually do get lost yeah. through, through time. Mm. And it's nearly 200 years old, so mm. I suppose. So you can play this instrument? I hope so. Are you going to give me a tune? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll see if I can voice the well, instrument and I'd see if I can. I'd be very interested to hear what you can see do. See if I can play a tune for you. It's an old, that was, it old actually, Irish tune. It, that, it, it almost had a medieval flavour to yes, it. Yes, yes. You know. It is an old Irish tune. Yes, it, it's, uh, I've no idea what it's worth. Yes. Have you got an idea of how much money you want for this? Um, well, I have. You've uh, got it in your head What somewhere. I would hope is to get my money back and maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. But we'll see. But I quite like it, so I'll try and buy it. OK, my dear. That's £50. And... Uh, there's a hundred pounds. Yes, my dear. There's a hundred and ten. What do you think about that? Um, I think. I just like it. Yes, I think the hundred pounds was music to my ears, yeah. but the ten isn't really striking. That's kind, that's kind of stopped it a little bit. Stri not striking the right note at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You're a wit as well as a musician. I try. <laughs> I'll take this away. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and thirty. There's £130. I quite like this instrument. Yes. I can see this <laughs> in the wee Helen shop. I can see the tail, a flag of legs. <laughs> Was it the Flora MacDonald instrument that she played to the wee Bonnie Prince? It's got a look about it. 13180, they say, Helen. Yes. Nice London maker. The question is, what would it bring at auction? Would right. it do yes. better than 130? Yes. Would it go up to the 180? I'm going to say this is the right lady for the instrument. You deal with her. Yes. It's about its money. Yes. Anything over that might be a gamble, but yes. who knows in auction? It's a yes. lovely item. Oh, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I do like it, as David yes. said. His advice, of course, is always the correct advice. I think I've been quite brave putting 130 quid down. It's worth more. I think if, if you were to pay more, a little bit more, you'd get, you'd get a good return on it. I've, I, I, in fact, I, I've, I got a good like idea, yeah, I've got a good idea of its market value. 130. Let me see. I'll take away the red one. Because we've got to do this in increments, you know. OK, my <laughs> Now, 140. Now, I'm getting pretty close to where I want to be on that. Well, I, I think if you were to give me another £20, I'd settle for that. I, and I know it's worth more uh, market value. Uh, 
And How about... How about if I make it three fifties? Three Royal Bank of Scotland fifties. Mm. It'd have to be 160, I'd say. That's a fair 160. price. 160? Yes, I think that's a fair price. Can we split the difference? 155? Okay, 155. 155. 155, yes, we've got yes, a deal. Yes. Victor, you're a good negotiator as well as well, a good musician. 155. I think that's a fair price. Fair yes. price? That's a fair deal. That's fine. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. I do like that. Yes, I'm happy to have this. Oxford Street London patent. Nice quality. The best. One happy Helen and Victor walks away with some top notes. Doug's up next, he's brought along an antique microscope passed down by his father. It's been languishing in the bottom of the wardrobe and uh, not appreciated. So uh, it would be nice to turn it into a bit of money into something more useful for me and also for the microscope to go to someone who can really appreciate it and the standard of engineering and the appearance of it. Doug, hello. Good luck, hello. Doug. Over to Cheryl Hakeney. Um, this is something that probably 15, 20 years ago, we used to sell lots and lots of these to mm -hmm. our Italian customers. Right. And I mean, loads of them. We used to send them out mm. to Italy, and I'm not quite sure what they actually did with them. And this one looks particularly complete. You've got the lenses here. And with Watson, the retailer, yeah. which is quite well known. Yes. This is what I call sort of a bit of a, a boy's toy. I don't yes, really yes. sort of deal in things like this, but even I know that Watson is a good make. Yes. And I like the fact it's got this nice, great wooden box here, nice condition. And as we said before, you've got all these little bits and pieces. So it's still still an attractive thing, isn't it? Mm, it it's is, quite, I think so, yes. quite fascinating. So although maybe not totally my kind of thing, I'll put some money on the table. Okay. So I do like something that's complete. And this is. Right, Doug, here we go. 20, 40, 60 pounds. I think a bit more than that, actually. A bit more than that. I'll round it up to 100 pounds, so you'd be looking about 115 at auction to return 100 in cash that I've put on the table. I think we're getting close, but I'd still like a bit more. I don't know if I'm going off it a bit now. 110 in cash. Well, if you're saying that's your absolutely best bid, I think I'll risk going to the auction. You're going to risk it? I think so. I hope it does very well for you. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank for bringing you. it, letting me try and buy it. Anyway. Thanks a lot. Doug's clearly focused on getting the best price. Let's not waste any time and head over to the sale room. Stephen Iredell's taking up his gavel. It belonged to your father. He obviously bought it because he probably saw it as a precision instrument and thought, Phew. it is very much a masculine thing. There are collectors. Is there someone here in the sale room for this item? Well, let's find out. At 75 and 80 now, 80 pounds, 5, 90. It's at 100, that's the reserve. It's worth a bit more than that. Let's settle at 130, 140, 150. I won't miss anybody at 160 pounds. It's now 160, that's getting more like it, I think. 190, 220, 240, 60, 280, sir. Thank you anyway. Thanks for your bids at 260 on the internet. 280, you're coming back, second bidder. 260 on the internet. 280 your bid, 280, 300 now, and 20. They're looking for 320. At 300 pounds, I think we're all settled. The gavel's raised, on the net and selling, 300. First thoughts, 300 pounds. Yes, I'm quite pleased with that. Pleased with that? Yes. We have the commission to take off. It is just under 250 pounds, about 246 pounds after the deductions. Excellent. Happy with that? I am, yes, indeed. Take home £246, that was the real deal. Back to the dealer's den where our next item awaits. Jill's popped in, she's having a chat with our hoggy. So, Jill, you bought in a really nice item. It's a brooch which I recognise, but tell me what you know about it. I know it's George Jensen. Right. Danish. Correct. And where did you acquire it from? My aunt died and it went to my father and then my father gave it to me. Oh, OK. George Jensen, premier maker, premier designer, really good stuff. It's sort of 
everyone likes the Scandinavian feel about him. Mm. And it's not marked like English silver, because on the back of this one, we've got 925 and sterling. So English silver would have an assay mark, and this is not, it's obviously continental silver. Yeah. It's beautifully cast with these two little birds in, on a, like a, wheat, a sheaf of some sort, isn't it? It's a wheat sheaf, isn't a it? A wheat sheaf, yeah. And it's really nice, I quite like it. Um, shall I try and make you an offer? Mm, please. Okay, I'll do my best. Yeah. I can't guarantee we're gonna buy it. But how does 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds sound? No way. How much do you think it's worth, Jill? I'm not telling you. Why? Come on, you. We're friends now. Yeah, well, we might be, but it's worth a bit more than that. Well, I reckon it's worth about 90 quid. No way, no. And I'm going to make 30 quid profit. No, it's not. It's worth more worth than more. that. No, it's worth more. 70 quid. No. No, it's worth more than that. How it much is more? Quite a bit more, yeah. <laughs> I know it is, and so, so do you. Are you saying you want to take it to auction? Well, I'll tell you what I think, Hoggy. The independent valuers, they, they're looking at this, and they're both in unison. They're both saying between 100 to 150. My dear friend Hoggy's put, what, 70 on the table? 70 so far. OK. I would have thought it probably is worth a little bit more, but bear in mind if you go to the auction, between the one and two, if it got just over the 100, you'd probably have 15 quid, 20 quid to pay. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to say, Hoggy, I'd like to see a little bit more getting up towards the 100, okay. considering there is commission to take off. Sound advice, Jill? Very good. I got a little slap on the wrist there, didn't I? Yeah, it's 70 is not good one. enough. No. 80 is pretty good. Are you tempted? No, not at all. This is my final offer. 90 of my hard-earned pounds. Make it 100 and I'll deal. I'm sure. Oh! Jill! <laughs> Jill! Sorry. Jill, is my friend Hoggy being a little bit tough with you? Yes, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, I think you, so. I think we just need to tempt you a little bit more. Now, it's 1 to 150 in the auction. Oh, right. And I think it might get just a little bit over the 100. Yeah. So, at 90 that. quid, I'm going to say, Hoggy, can you not push it another tenner and make it a hundred? And if the seller doesn't want that, let them gamble. But at a hundred, I think you'd get out of that and make a bit of a profit. So do I. Dear. I do, yeah. I'd hate to lose a deal for a tenner, but I think I am going to lose this one. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, come on. No, look, I'm done at 90 quid, Joe. I'd love to do a deal. Please shake my hand and let's be friends again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really want to go to auction, thank you. Thanks, <laughs> I got £90 and I'm going shopping. <laughs> so Jill hits the high street £90 better off. Also coming up, things get personal over on Ian's table. It needs, it needs quite a lot of work. Oh, you would do after those after all these years. years. <laughs> And just flashing these eyes at me. Maybe, Is yeah. he trying to win me over or what? Could be, yes, it could be. <laughs> Will Ian fancy a flutter? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's all going Leicester. The dealer's den is packed. I bought in an interesting clock, 1857. It's a blinking eye clock, and I'm expecting to get somewhere around 200 to 250, hopefully. It's over to the one and only king of bling, Ian Towning. Can you tell us something about this cast iron clock? Well, it's been handed down through the families and generations. I'm a bit reluctant to let it go, but my sons and daughter, the grandchildren, they don't like it very much. They don't like it? No. So, the thing is, it needs quite a lot of work. When you look at the dial, it needs a new dial. And is that what you would do after those years? After all these years. years. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of Botox here. But I think it's had quite a lot. Yeah. 
and just flashing these eyes at me. I think, wow, what's going on? You well, know, it may be. Is uh, he trying to win me over? Or it what? could be. <laughs> yes, it could be. And how long have you had it? It's been passed down for the last hundred years. Maybe more than that now. I don't know where it originally came from, but it used to be my grandfather's. If it was in absolute mint condition, or if it was in condition that I know that I could do something with it, I probably would have loved to have bought it. But I think it needs far too much work done on it, and a lot of money spent on it to bring it up to the standard that I would want to put in my shop. Because if I made a bid, it would be a very mean bid because of Family. the money. How <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you how. <laughs> I would say, you know, John, here's 50 pounds. You know, that's what I'm prepared to spend on it. Right. Okay. Now, normally I'm saying to our dealer, come on, let's get some proper money down. But I have to tell you, I understand where Ian is coming from because you have an item here that had it have been in good condition for its age would have been very desirable. Now, our valuers have put... A, a reasonably conservative estimate of two to three hundred. I think it's a little bit over the top, the estimation, because of the condition. So I'm going to say, enter the sale room, throw it open to the floor, and see where it finds its level. My feeling is it will be round the lower part of the estimate, and it might even be a little bit below that. Thank you. So do you agree in taking it to auction? Taking the chance? Would you want to put another 50 on the table? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> I'll take it to auction then. you take it to auction. Thank you, John, for bringing it along. And good luck in auction. Thank I do much. hope that it will make at least £150. OK? Well, a little bit disappointing. I thought we'd, we'd be at least 100 minimum anyway. If he looks as good as that, when he's 160, he'll be doing fine. Risky business, John. Time to find out if you can reach that target. It's here in the sale room, but there is a reserve of 100 quid, so it's quite a low reserve. My only worry is the paintwork. It still looks a bit... a bit cross-eyed, doesn't it? You know, and the paintwork's not great, but let's see what happens. And it starts at £150. It's in at £150. It's a rare thing. 150 pounds, 160, 160 bit, 170 here, 180, 180 has it to the right hand side, 190 bid, 200, one more, go on, it's worth it, at 190 bid. Another bidder now. It's worth it, it's an unusual thing, at 200 pounds, on the right, at 200, 210 do I see, at 200 pounds, gentleman's bid then, selling, quite sure, at 200, 200. What's your thoughts about the £200 under the gavel? Satisfying? Oh, yes, yes. So £200, take away the um, commission, leaves you about 164 quid. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> that's the real deal. Blinky neck, you showed Ian. Good decision, John. Back to the wheeling and dealing, a mother and son duo, Catherine and Max, are taking on our Cheryl. So, so was he bought for you, Catherine, when you were a little girl? He was bought girl? for me. Um, my, my father and his family were uh, German-Jewish refugees. Right. And my uncle, my father's brother, settled in Holland after the war. OK. And when I was born, it was very exciting for them because I was the first member of the next generation, and he bought me this stipend. Which is, wow. and I had that as I grew up. And is this, is this you? Yes, this is, uh, this is me when I was five, holding my hair, running down the pavement at my grandmother's house. Oh. <laughs> now, how on earth can you possibly think of selling him? Well, he's been with me a long year, long time, 48 years. And he said to me, I just need a new mistress. I've been <laughs> sitting around watching you for 48 years. I'm bored. I want to move on. Has he got a name, by the way, this hair? It's just hair, I think. Just hair? Yeah. And I think you're maybe a bit old for him. Is that, is that the reason you're, yeah. you're OK about selling him? Yeah. So shall we just have a quick look? And I'm hoping to find in this ear, oh, yes, the little magic 
button. There it is. Because this is so often, it's gone, it's missing. Oh, really? Children have played with these things because that's what they were oh. for, and they've been prized out or they're lost. They're still made today, as yes. you probably know. Great quality. Were very expensive yes. as well. So you were a very lucky little girl to have. I think it was such a celebration. Oh that, yes, that, absolutely. That they'd survived and I've been born. But he's in great condition, considering we have evidence he has been played with yes. as well. But anyway, we'll get some cash out. Let me know what you think. Okay. Okay. He's very cute. I do like his cute little style bits. Red. Off we go. Twenty. 40, 60 pounds. No, a bit more than 60. No? Yeah, a bit no. more. Well. This is so difficult when you're buying something, <laughs> and I'm buying something that is so <gasps> sentimental. It's terrible, you mm, feel. But I've got to look at this as an item to buy. So, how about 70 pounds? Not Max, 70. what do you think to 70? A bit more. Yeah, not 70. Not 70. Let's take the 10 away then. You're pulling at my heartstrings because I like him. Right, this is top money in my opinion. 80 pounds, you'd have to get over 100. Just over 100 to return you 80 if you did go to auction. 10 five? I don't know. You asked for another five. Okay. For another? Five. Another five? I don't think I've got That's a five. Suggest. I don't think I've got a five. It needs to go on holiday. Oh, We've had gosh. such a hard year. We've got no fives. <laughs> there's, eight, there's 80 pounds there. Oh. You make the decision. OK, we'll take it. You're going to take it? We've got a deal? Yeah. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks I promise very much. I will give him a very good home. <laughs> Well done, guys. Now it's back to Hoggy, where a collection of Victorian postcards awaits. David and the auctioneer are in on the action because it's such a highly specialised lot. Joy, thank you for coming in today. Very well. Tell me about your postcard album. My postcard album is from my mum, right. who is 95 years old. This one is a bit different, different, in so much as it's Australia and places like that, isn't it? Yes, yes. But uh, quite a few of them have got the, the stamps ripped out. Right, yes. And I just oh, wonder why. Was there the stamp, stamp collectors there? Yes, yes, she did used to collect stamps as well. All in all, it's an unusual collection. And wouldn't it be great if we were in Australia right now? Yeah, it would. We should transport the show to Australia and then sell them there, <laughs> That would we? be great, I'd love to I'm there. sure there are buyers out there for this sort of thing. I love postcards. Stephen, now you've had a, a quick glance at this album, these postcards. <laughs> is there anything in there that you consider is collectible? With postcards, anything like this, we always talk about cross-sector appeal. We want things that appeal to more than one group of, of people. And in there you've got something for people interested in tribal art and ethnographical um, things. We've got a few ships, we've got some things from all over the world. Really interesting. OK, the independent value is they've stabbed at two to three hundred pounds. Yeah. Now, you know all about this crossover business. <laughs> How are you going to stab at I it? agree. That's exactly what I've put in. I think it's two to three hundred pounds. Um, and we just hope that there's a couple of, there are a couple of cards in there that two collectors fall in love with and fight for. Now, Hoggy's a character. Is he going to be interested in such a thing as this? Let's find out. Let's see what he puts on the table. So, would you like me to make you an offer? Please, yes. I'd like to make you Thank an you. offer. Uh, OK, so I'm going to go 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds, I'll give you for them. No? No, certainly not. How much more do you think they're worth? They're worth quite a bit more. Really? Yeah. I'll I try just think a they're one, so though. fascinating. I'll try 100. No, I don't think I can take that. You've got higher... Yes, I'll hire David aspirations. David Albion. Well... <laughs> It, these are always very tricky. When we get albums in with postcards or photographs, I do not know what the value of these items are. And I normally say, get it into the sale room and let's see if those collectors yeah. come out for it. It may not come up trumps, but my advice is get into the sale room and test the water. Oh, dear. That's... Uh... 
put the cat amongst the pigeons, isn't it? Yeah, I think I will take them to auction. Can I try another much. offer? Go on then, try another I'll up it to 160. No, I don't think so. Okay. No, I think I'll take it to auction. Thank you sure? very much. Yes, thank you. I think it's the right decision. Thank you very much. I thank really you. like it. Nice thank item. You. They're shaking hands. It's over to you. <laughs> Will we find somebody? Pressure's on me, isn't it? <laughs> Pressure's on you. <laughs> I have never been to auction and I just thought it was perhaps a little bit more specialised um, viewing that it needed, so to take to auction it would probably be very interesting. With that sort of postcard album, you can get a slap on the face when you go to auction with the price you offered, because that could make four or five hundred quid. I offered what I thought it was worth. A picky hoggy means a day out at the auction for joy. A lot of our independent values thought the content was quite exciting. I thought it was one of those lots you should put to the room, to the sale room, and see what happens. And here it is now. But 160 do I see? At £150 on commission. Is there interest in the room? At £150, 160 do I see? 160 at the room. 160, 170 on the net. 180, 190. 190, 200, 220. They're looking for 220 on the internet. <laughs> 220 for them. 240, internet going mad now. There's quite a few people coming in on the internet together. Uh, settle now, 280, sir. 270, if it helps you, to be fair to you. On the internet at 260 pounds. All sure, then. The gavel's raised and I'm selling at 260 pounds. 260 pounds? That's brought a smile <laughs> to your face. A little bit of a surprise. We have commission to take away. It leaves you with about £213. Fantastic. Satisfactory? Really, really satisfactory. Look at the smile. <laughs> That's much. what makes this job worthwhile. <laughs> a good day here. Real Deal 260. Take home £213. Still to come, our dealers wheel out nice all the excuses. If yeah. it was studded in diamonds and gold, I'd say yes, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure where the market is in this, and I personally, it's not my taste. Will our sellers take this lying down? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're seeing the very best of Leicester's antiques and collectibles today. Some famous figures have arrived on Helen's table. You've brought in your royal ducks today. Oh, no. Now, do you collect royal ducks? We do, yes. Um, How many pieces have you got? Well, I couldn't really say exactly, but probably a dozen different sizes. A dozen or so? About that. So what made you sell these ones today? Well, we're in a position now where we've got absolutely no more room in the house. So you have to buy a bigger house? <laughs> so I'd have to move house or try and get rid of some... Some of them, yeah. Hopefully to be able to buy something else. Later. Yes. Royal Ducks. Very popular, made around the turn of the century and very decorative. Slightly bourgeois taste, but always those colour... Those colour palettes are always nicely muted. Well, they are saleable. I'll put some money on the table. You may not like my offer, but I'll put some money down and you'll tell me okay. how we'll go on. OK. So how about 50 quid, 70 pound? How about 90 pound for your two Royal Ducks figures? Mm. Where do you see? I see a little bit more, at least. A little bit more? I, I'm, I know this is a kind of mean offer, but I'm not sure where the market is in this, and I personally, it's not my taste. I'll not be too mean. There's £100 for your figures. Um, I would like a little bit more if I can. A little bit more? Um, I don't know if you've come to the right woman on this occasion. If, if, I'll go another tenner. 110 Another ten, which would pay for the uh, commission at the auction. I'm going to be really mean. I'm going to put another fiver on the table. So that's £115. That's going to be my very top offer. Have we got a deal, Ron? We have a deal. We have, we a, have deal. a deal. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks for bringing them in. Thank you now. And I think it worked out 
just about right. Uh, there wasn't a, a great deal of profit in it, but there was a little, little bit of profit on what I was expecting. There are collectors for them. Personally, I find them a no-no, but if I make 20 quid, 30 quid, I'll be happy. Will Helen find a buyer? Find out later on in the show. Let's rejoin the hustle and bustle in the dealer's den. So Militaria is next in line for Ian. Quite a collection of badges, yes. Militaria. Yes. Uh, where on earth did you find them? Well, they were my late husband's, whose, uh, these were her, um, his father's. Whether he wore them or collected them, um, um, basically sat in the loft. So not doing anything, so I thought I'd bring them along um, and see what interest. With, with these, you know, even though they're all in metal and yes. they're beautifully made, I mean, yes. there's a lot of work here, you know, I mean, when you look at them, there's plenty of work in them. Yes. They, they don't carry a great deal of money. No. You know, they don't carry a great deal of value. Mm. Only to somebody who has got a collection or might have one of them missing from the collection and want to add it to that particular collection. Right, yes. I could make you an offer on it, gauging the fact that, you know, I have three or four of these that have come Already. through with other medals and things like that into the shop and I've bought yes. them and I've just put a crazy sort of silly little price on them and they've been in the shop for ages. I would gauge my price on what I have in the mm. shop. Okay? Okay, yeah. You might say, that's not enough, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's okay. because I'm, I'm afraid I don't fully understand it. Yeah. I said, sort of, well, what should I say, uh, 20, uh, 40 pounds, you know, uh, I may be way out, I don't mm. know. Yeah. I have no idea. I think they were worth a little bit more than that, I do. You do? Yes, but I, I do. have no idea, I yes. really don't. You know, I'm being very honest with you. If yeah. it was studded in diamonds and gold, I'd say, yes, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I know. Uh, so what would you like to do? Would you like to chance them in auction? And you don't want to offer me any more? No, because I don't understand what they're You want. don't. You know, I really don't. I, I think I'll do that. I think I'll You'd go take to them auction. to auction. But well, good luck but, in yeah, auction. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for bringing them along. That's okay. Thank yep, you very thank much. Thank you. Thank I think they could do better in auction. Uh, he was offering me £40. Pounds. Um, there's quite a few, uh, probably two or three unusual, so um, I'm going to go to auction. Sally fancies a gamble, but will the collectors be in the room? Find out in a few minutes. Also still to come, some tough words from Hoggy. Please bear in mind I need to make a profit. I'm not here for the fun of it. But the Duke can talk tough too. We want to see a little bit more money, Hoggy, somewhat of investment. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Leicester. Before the break, we saw Sally turn down Ian's offer of £40 per collection of military badges. After some advice from our dealer, Sally's decided to pin her hopes on the sale room. But will the military fans be there? It's over to the Duke. It's coming up now. The estimate is 60 to 100. That sounds about right. And the reserve is 60 pounds. There's a nice collection there and good military badges. Let's see what happens. They start at lower end estimate at 60 pounds. Five do I see. 65, 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5, 100. 10, 120, 130, at 120 pounds I'm bid. At 120 pounds, 130 now. At 120, 130, 130 you're back. 140, 150, at 140 pounds bid. Turn down 40, you were right. 160, they're still going. At 160 pounds, 170 do I see? Quite sure at 160. Okay, Gavel has gone down at 160 pounds. I reckon that just about 130, maybe a little bit more than 130 pounds. You said, gosh, gosh you must be yeah, happy. Must Any idea happen. what you're going to do with, with the money, the 130 quid? Well, my son's 19 next week, right. so it goes towards his birthday present. OK, what's your son called? Daniel. Daniel, it's your birthday next week, and what about this for a mum? Yeah. She's putting that money towards your birthday present. Now, that's what I call a mum. Yeah. That's a real deal. 
Our dealers have been working flat out today. With time for one last deal with our favourite Cockney character. Shiny little table we've got, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Are they yours? Yes, they are. And how did you get them? Well, actually, how um, they were my father's father was doing some decorating and this person couldn't afford to yeah. pay for the decorating, so he paid them in the... Really? Half of the sovereigns, yeah. We've got five full sovereigns. Yes. And three half sovereigns. Yes. And uh, as, I, as I know you know, they've got their set price. Yes. And my offer relates to if someone bought a mortgage and they've got to pay another 15% on top of my offer. Oh, no, I realise that. OK. Yeah. So let's not mess around. It's 500. There's a thousand. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, eleven hundred. Twenty, forty, sixty. Eleven hundred and sixty pounds. Yes. Is my offer. I would That's like cash. more than that. Please bear in mind I need to make a profit. I'm not yes. here for the fun of it. Yes. OK. £1,200. No. Really? No. <laughs> Just before we go any further, let me tell you exactly what the independent values on the auctioneer say, Hoggy. Okay. 240 for a sovereign, and there are five of those. 120 for a half sovereign, and there are three of those. Now, that is as we are filming today. So, in scrap value or exchange value in a bullion dealer, there is £1,560 worth of value. What's on the table now is £1,200. What we are saying is it probably is worth a little bit more than this. We want to see a little bit more money, Hoggy, for a different margin. I will put a little bit more down, you're right. But also, you, what you've got to think about, if someone pays 1,400 quid, they're not going to lay out 1,400 quid and gamble that gold stays that price and go down the road and make 120 quid. People don't work like that on 1,400 quid. OK, I hear what Hoggy is saying. What I also will tell you is sovereigns are not necessarily the scrap value. There are people in the sale room that want to buy those to keep those by for a rainy day as somewhat of investment, and they will see those in the sale room at 1,560 quid. So a private person who is not going to resell them may be very happy to pay 1,400 pound in the sale room, yes. but they still have to take away commission from you and pay commission on top for that. So see what Hoggy does. Okay. What would you be happy with today? Right, would you go to 13.40? I'll do 13.20 if we can do a deal now. I'll put it down. <laughs> so we've got uh, 1,200, 12.20, 12.40, 12.60, 12.80, 1,300, 13.20. So 13.20, Joe, we have now got a final deal. Yes. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> very pleased with that because obviously if I'd gone to auction I'd have had to take the commission off so I think that was very good. I can buy sovereigns all day long and the price I paid I'm gonna make a little profit but we've got to make a profit haven't we? Oh we won't begrudge you a little profit Hoggy with over two thousand pounds of their own money offered up. Let's see how successful our dealers have been with turning their buys around. It was a quiet day for Mr Towning. His two items slipped away under the hammer. I think they were worth a little bit more than that, I do. You do? Yes, but I, I do. I have no idea. I yes. really don't. Helen managed to sell one of her items on. Nice quality. The best. However, the Royal Ducks hit a bum note as the figures remain unsold. I don't know if you've come to the right woman on this occasion. Just the one item for Cheryl. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I promise so I will give him a very good home. Hair today, gone tomorrow, but she only managed to break even. This just leaves our hoggy. He tracked down a George Jensen collector and made a nice little profit. Premier maker, premier designer, really good stuff. 
And finally, it was a seven-day turnaround for the Sovereigns. They were cashed into a bullion dealer for a tidy sum. Top work, Hoggy. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> We've had a great day, a really good crowd of people. Lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.